Friends in Christ, a blessed Sunday to you all. Today is the 10th of October, the year 2021, and uh, liturgically is the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As usual, being a Sunday, we are presented with three readings plus a psalm. A psalm. The first reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom. The second reading um, is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. The first is Wisdom 7, 7 to 11. The, first, the second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. And the Gospel passage, a very lengthy Gospel, Mark 10, 17 to 30. Shall we please begin with the Gospel of today? As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a young man ran up to him, knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking up him, at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking only in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give it to the poor, and you have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. And followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake. And for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses, brothers and sisters, and mothers and children, and lands with persecutions, and eternal life in the age to come. Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 30, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this is the gospel. It can be divided into three. Jesus' encounter with, um, with the young rich man, then his, his discourse on the difficulty of the rich possessing the kingdom of God, then Peter's statement that of having denounced themselves, Peter and the rest of the disciples, to follow Jesus Christ. A very lengthy reading, but very beautiful, very beautiful. There are also cause for reflection, especially certain statements when Christ says, uh, um, it is difficult, um, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven or God. We need to explain it, uh, try to explain these statements of Jesus, what it means. But I would like to begin um this reflection with you this day, the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, with an example, sort of a story. A story. Many of you in your homes, beautiful homes, at on your dining tables, at home in your dining tables, you have these fruits. These, I call them fake fruits because they are not real. Like some of them are made of plastics and some others are made of wood. At times you see them on the dining tables, fruits made of plastics. 
they serve uh, ornamental purposes for decoration. You see them on tables. Imagine a mother uh, at home who, who always gives his child, a little boy or girl of two or three years, these fake fruits to, to play with. Then as this child grows up, uh, he becomes an adult, an adolescent, he or she is maturing. Then the mother wants to take away these fake fruits and give him real fruits, like whether they are banana by this time, real bananas or pineapple or, or apples. Then the child says, no, I, I prefer, I prefer the fake fruits. These are what I want to eat. Imagine that situation in the house. No matter what the mother or father says, this child is still convinced of what he's saying. She prefers the fake fruits to the original ones. The same or a similar thing as what we see in the gospel of today. Riches, riches, wealth, possessions, compared to the kingdom of God, it's like these fake fruits, the original fruit and the fake ones. The kingdom of God, the treasures in them are original, while these riches, the ornaments of gold, silver, can be compared to these fake fruits. In fact, the first reading, the book of Wisdom, chapter 7, verse 7 to 10, highlights that he says compared to wisdom riches are like sand on the shores of a sea the riches we possess but this doesn't mean that riches in themselves aren't good no in fact in the old testament we read that it is the blessings of god that makes one rich proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 it is not one's hard work or the type of work he has or engages in. Oh, but somebody will say, oh, I know somebody who doesn't believe in God and he has riches. Oh, that person who doesn't believe in God, who has riches, the life and soul in him is from who? It's from God. It's from God. So the person may decide to profess, believe in something else other than God, but the soul in that person was made fashioned by God. It is God who gives strength and energy for man to work. Proverbs 10.22 Then in Genesis 13, two, scripture says that the man Abraham was very rich in flock, in animals, as well as gold and silver. Who blessed Abraham? It is God who blessed Abraham. Why then does the gospel present to us today that these riches, which has God as a source, are now becoming an obstacle to salvation, going back to this God. And this is what we need to explain. The riches themselves are not bad. God gave them to us. But in giving this gift to us, God asks any man or woman who possesses these riches, my son, my daughter, yes, it is I who gave these to you. You have filled your home. Every part of your home is filled with my blessings, my gift, my riches. Now, create a cubicle for me so that in that cubicle, I'll keep my presence. In that cubicle will be a representation of my kingdom. Then, man or woman who has been blessed with all these riches says, No, Lord, I cannot keep a cubicle for you in my home within my riches. I don't need your presence. I don't need your kingdom. That is the message, the crux of the message, a summary of the gospel passage. Let's move deep down into the story. I told you that it can be divided into three sections, the, the passage we've read today. The first part is a young man who runs towards Jesus. Look at his movement. He runs towards Jesus. He meant something. He was seeking something. In the gospel, it's not come to see people running. The few people who ran saw something. Zacchaeus ran to Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus, an old man who ran towards Jesus. You remember the, at the resurrection, the woman ran to the, the women ran to the tomb of Jesus. It is not common to see people running. He who runs in the gospel runs to search for Jesus. And the second element that points to this reality that this young man 
indeed was searching for God, Christ, was the act of bowing or kneeling, which in scripture represents sign of reverence or obedience. But this time, it meant that he was in need because in scripture, he who goes down on the knees also requests help. This young man, very rich, this young man who has observed all the commandments, as a result of which Jesus loved him, still lacked something in his life. His home was filled with everything. Everything you can imagine of these days. But there was no space for that reality that could give satisfaction. The kingdom of God, the presence of God. And Jesus says, well, you've done well all this life, all your life. There's only one thing missing. Go, sell all these things. Dispose them off. Dispose them off in what sense? Jesus was not asking him to go and throw them away. Remember, later you understand from Peter's words. Peter says, we've left everything to follow you. What did Peter leave? Peter was a fisherman together with James and John. They left their boats and nets to follow Jesus. But remember, anytime they were close to Capernaum, when they were at the seashore, the Sea of Galilee, it was their boats that Jesus Christ used. So they left the work they were doing, but the objects that they really possessed, they didn't lay them off because it was going to be necessary or they were going to be necessary for God. So at times we confuse, preacher men confuse us. Somebody is rich. He's into business, a banker. He's a teacher. Then somebody says, God has called you, so leave the teaching, leave your banking, every money, give them to the poor and come. No. God may need those gifts he's given you, but for another purpose. God may need your teaching skills because he may be calling you as evangelist. God may need the money you've saved. He's not asking you to throw everything off. But these riches he's given you must serve a purpose. Keep them in one side of your home and give another part of your home to him. The challenge for us is that when we have received all these gifts from God, we flood our homes with these riches and there is no space for God. That is the difficulty. That is the challenge. That is the challenge. The God who has blessed you with riches is not asking you to enjoy. It's not asking that you shouldn't enjoy them. So that we have so many rich people and they are always sad because it's like there is a demand from their churches and groups. No, donate to the poor, donate to the church. And these people cannot enjoy what they really have. Peter went back to his boat, but not to work, to use it to advance the cause of the kingdom. Peter will later say, Lord, we have left everything, wives, mothers, fathers, to follow you. You think they didn't go back home? And who told you Peter left the wife? Peter had a mother-in-law, Luke 5. Jesus even went to heal that woman. So it was not that Peter had divorced or separated himself from the wife. No, Peter whose first, before coming to know Christ, was attached to this woman, now gave part of his attachment to the wife and part to Christ. So loving the wife less and loving Christ more, giving space to Christ in his home. So in the midst of all your riches, the beautiful case, everything God has given you, you can still make a cubicle, a home for God who gave you these riches, dearly beloved. But this young man and the words, go sell and come to follow me, left very sad. Scripture says because he had so many riches. Because he had been flooded with these riches, his mind, his heart could not let go of those things. Could not let go of those things. So Jesus says, wow, how hard it is for those who have filled their homes with these things to inherit, to create a space for God. And it is true. To understand this, let's look at the hymn, this, um, the, the, the verse before the gospel. Blessed are the poor in spirit, they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Who are the poor in spirit? Poor in spirit. Spirit in this sense is not the Holy Spirit, poor in the Holy Spirit. No, poor in spirit, your heart, that aspect of your life, that cannot be seen so poor in heart. It means those who are rich possess all these things but still able to create space for God in their lives. 
they know that everything they have inherited comes from God. So they are still able to give space in their lives to God. Or people who are poor and in their poverty, they still have space for God. So don't be deluded to believe that, oh, there is no rich man or woman who can go to heaven. It is a lie. This is not the thinking, the thought of God. In fact, there are so many rich men and women in heaven already. And there are millions, there will be millions of rich men and women who will still inherit heaven. Whilst there will be poor people who will lose heaven. Because even in their poverty, they are still not able to create space for God in their lives. They are poor in the world in reality and poor in spirit too because they are not able to create. They are lacking. They are not able to create space for God. And that is the risk, friends in Christ. We are living in the world where we are all tempted to acquire, acquire, to have, acquire, grab, grab, like the young man. I want to grab eternal life. I want to inherit. But Jesus says, no, let go of your life. Create a space. A week ago, almost a week ago, I was talking with my colleague priest. We went to visit somebody and the young girl was saying, no. I got a new dress a few weeks ago, but I have a new wedding and I want to acquire something. That preacher said, no, but this, you just acquired this. No, no, I need a new one. And this person doesn't know who God is. Sunday comes and it passes. Her life is all about acquiring, 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 having, having, having. This is not judgment. This is an explanation of the readings of today. If somebody wants to leave his or her life just in acquisition of goods without creating space for God, that is the person to whom this message goes to. To whom this message goes to, dearly beloved. We can still keep the riches God has given us. We can still maintain hard work, whatever we're doing. But in these hard work and riches, in the midst of all these, the greatest thing, dearly beloved, is to create a space for God who gives us these riches. Keep a cubicle in your life for God, for his kingdom. Let God find a room in your home. Let God find a space in your home, in your heart. Liberate yourself from these entanglements, creating space for God. And that is when your riches will make sense. You can enjoy your riches here on earth and in the life to come. In the life to come. I will end this with a very, a very nice story. There was an accident on the uh, on the highway, then a fatal one because people lost their lives. Almost half of the occupants, those who were in the vehicle, lost their lives. Then others were severely injured. Then one man who was very was was injured, but I was at the point of death, was accosted. Somebody got to him who was a religious man and said, Man, I can see you breathing. You are not you are not dead yet. Can I present you Jesus Christ? He said, Yes, yes. But the man said, No, I have one request to make. I am with three women. So what should I do now? The man said, No, 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 no. If you accept Christ now, you'll be saved. Then after this, when your life is safe from this incident, you can decide to let go of the two women and stay with only one. So, oh, okay, so I will be safe from this accident, but I have to let go of these two women. Say, so, okay, now keep your baptism, keep your Jesus Christ. Somebody who is at the point of death, leaving two women to embrace one, to accept Christ at the point of death, said, oh, then he will choose death, or he will choose that situation, that condition. Dearly beloved, what is it that you possess that you didn't receive from God? The breath of life. These books that surround me as a result of the blessings of the church and good people like some of you, the cars you have parked outside, the decorations in your room, the list you've made of things to purchase this Christmas, these things do not serve as obstacles to us. I pray this message like the sword, the letter to the Hebrew talks about. The word of God is like a double-edged sword which is able to penetrate. I pray this word will become like that sword that penetrates our hearts, creating space for God to have his way in our homes. Accept this word of God. Pray over it. Pray like this, Lord. 
I thank you for this message this Sunday. I receive it. Let this word become like a sword that divides my heart, creating a space for your presence. I willingly and freely accept you. The peace of the Lord, dearly beloved, reign in your hearts. Peace be with you and have a blessed week. Amen.